I want to talk. Hi, everyone. It's Alberto here from Los Bros Reviews. I'm here with my brothers, Carlos and Armando. We, uh, all three of us just watched the new, the new animated movie, Batman, The Killing Joke. Um, and, uh, you know, this is going to be a review where we're all going to go through what we thought about it. Um, I personally thought it was, it was pretty good. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of exposition at the beginning that was added to kind of, I feel like, make it filler and, uh, and lengthen it out and flesh it out a little bit. But uh, overall, I liked it. It was pretty faithful to the comic. What do you guys think? Um, I thought it was fairly accurate as well. Um, I, I do agree with you that the, the beginning portion was kind of just padding. And uh, there's a couple other things that made it awkward for me overall, but I'll get into that later. I don't know. I didn't read the comics, and the movie just kind of felt like two separate little stories hashed together. So I, I, I didn't really like it that much. It just reminded me of the old show, but it didn't really feel like a good episode or an R-rated episode of the old show to me. And I, I didn't read the comics, so I don't know the source material as well. So going in, it's just like a Batman animated series movie. Right. I, don't know, I think they could have done better. Well, just just so you guys know, and, and for those who haven't read the comic book, the 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 movie is is absolutely faithful to the comic book, but only from a certain point. The the comic book actually begins right at the scene where Batman and Commissioner Gordon walk into Arkham Asylum to uh to go talk to the Joker. Right, like right there. That's where that's the very beginning of the comic book. So mm-hmm. everything before that, the whole the whole you know, Batgirl or Batwoman, whatever you want to call her. I'm not really familiar with what exactly her nomenclature is. But uh, all that, all that backstory, that is not in a comic book whatsoever. You know, there's not even mention of, uh, you know, you don't even see Batwoman or Batgirl costume in a comic book. It all starts right there. And, and from that point when he walks into the asylum, from that point on, it is like frame by frame and line by line, almost exactly what I'm about the comic book. Yeah, that's how... I didn't know that going into it, but that's how it felt. It felt like there was a whole just brand new story all of a sudden. Like it, the tone was different in the first half than it was in the second half. So it was like, I don't know. It's just I I didn't see what the first half really had to do with that second half. They right. they just felt disjointed. I mean, I don't I don't know who helped you know write this thing, but yeah, I, I mean that that could be a direct result of just one of them. You know, one half being just the classic comic book, and the other half being you know something that they just kind of threw in there. It just yeah. seems so pointless and unnecessary. They could have just started right there. You know, the com- that's, that's the beauty of the comic book. It, it, that's the beauty of the comic book. It is a very short comic book, you know, and you can read it in one sitting, no problem. But uh, that's because it takes for granted the fact that you know who, you know, Barbara Gordon is and the relationship between the Commissioner and the Joker and Batman and everybody. You know, the movie, the movie, you know, probably for the sake of being, trying to be at least an hour long, it has to go through the motions of like, hey, Here's also this is what the relationship is, you know, going into it. This is why this matters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's, let's widen the audience a little bit. Let's explain this a little bit. You know, oh, a little weird, dirty gutter love scene. You know, now that are the yeah. human eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and but I want to add on to that that I understand why they put it in there, but it felt so weird because number one. Batman looks significantly older than than she does. Yeah, she's more like a father figure than like a boyfriend figure. And then when when they started, you know, making out, it was just weird. I was like, "Here's this old man," <laughs> and he, you know. He's well, right, like, and then they show those like you know those flashbacks of like way back when with the Joker, the Joker, like you know, it's clearly like in the past at some point, right? The cars look old. Even yeah. the Batmobile that he pulls up in is, is kind of an old looking Batmobile. Yeah, he's just like it's an like, old ass man. Like, yeah, so Batman's been around, you know, for I mean, it kind of, it's gotta be at least thirty or forty years. Let's you know, let's be let's be generous here, comparing to computer screens and library to the style of Joker's flashbacks. You know, in a comic book, that's that's not a big deal. They have been fighting for for decades, you know, and there's no weird romance between Barbara, uh, Gordon, and Batman to like muddle things up, which is all all that serves to do the entire thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And and it just it doesn't make any sense because they they didn't have any previous romance, so it was kind of like it was just there. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't make any sense because it, it's not part of the character. Well, it's just not necessary, you know. I mean, and unfortunately, that was just because they needed to fill up an hour and, and fifteen or sixteen minutes, whatever the runtime yeah. is. Well, when I saw no, the runtime, I was like. 
I thought it was going to be awesome, but then the first half hour was spent on not the killing joke. Because you could tell it's not really part of the story. And it's just like, if they would have just used the full hour for the whole killing joke, instead of just, you know, like at the end, I know Commissioner Gordon's supposed to like kind of go crazy for a little bit, but the, the fun house really wasn't that like terrifying. Yeah, there was like those pictures, but they didn't really go in depth about like how terrifying it was or how it was supposed to drive him insane. And like, I don't know. Right. You know, and the comment doesn't get into that much detail, but that's one of those areas where when you have an hour to kill, you know, you're you're in that video animated medium, like, okay, be creative there. You know, like you're like you're that that's a perfect example, you know, like it doesn't really go into that much detail in the comic either, but I don't know, create a nightmare sequence, make it look weird, you know, something like that. No you know, don't just cop out, just go line by line from that point on to get through the second half of that thing. Yeah. There is another part that I wanna make mention of that I didn't really care for too much. And I don't know if this happened in the comic because I haven't read it in a while. But uh, but the Joker's musical number was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I was talking about tone. Like it just doesn't. Like, I get I get that it was a dark song, but it was just. We've been reviewing you know the the movie so far, you know, so eh, it's pretty good. But I haven't really mentioned the comic or the story itself. The comic book is very good. I mean, in in a couple of the aspects of the second half of the movie, you'll see. You know, since it reflects the comic book so accurately, is it, what what kind of sets this this particular story apart is like the simplicity of it. You know, it's it's just a very small encapsulated. I mean, the whole story is really one scene. You know, they they they're from the asylum. The Joker's gone, and they meet at the, uh, the the abandoned theme park, and then that's pretty much where it wraps up. And he tells the joke. You know, but like it being that simple, you don't have any you know any other superheroes, any you know insane gadgets, any jets, any any anything like that. You know, it's just. Batman in a very traditional Batmobile chasing a joke around. He uses just like acid and poison to uh, to do his you know to, to get his point across. You know, so I, you know that's yeah. that's kind of the cool aspect about it. You know, it, it, this is an era of like the Avengers and every you know every comic book I read involving Batman before I read that one was you know like Red Dawn, Red Sun, you know Apocalypse, you know, just like crazy things where it's just like world shattering gigantic events. And this one's just like it's just this very small personal story. That's kind of what sets it apart. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, it's uh, all different than like any Marvel movie, yeah, or any Netflix exactly. uh, comic book movie that they have right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, On that big scale. and it also, I want to say that towards the end, where he's like, he's like beating the crap out of him, and then suddenly he decides <laughs> we don't have to kill each other anymore, and then he tells a joke, and they they become friends, and it was just a little weird. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like that. That's why I didn't like all the comic book when I first read it, too. I was like, come on, really? You know, yeah. he just shot, like, you know, especially in a movie, like, you're, like, lover in the spine. Yeah. Like, it, that's, that's why I didn't like that first half. It just made the second half weaker in every way. Like, whenever you include it, everything that has significance in the second half just became less significant because of the first half. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. They went a little overboard with the whole, like, you know, extending the palm outwards to him. I'm not even sure if he actually did that in the comic book, you know, just like, here, like, I'll take my hand. I don't know, that, that was a little bit too mushy for me at the end there. I mean, it, yeah. it just made Batman, at first it was like, you know, oh, he's just kind of a stoic guy, but then it's just like he's emotionless. Like, you know, this, it, this was supposed to be the, the killing joke. Like, it was supposed to make Batman want to kill the Joker. And then he just laughs it off, like, oh, it's so ironic, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, whatever. Run, it, run away, Joker. Like, yeah. Frolic, go run to the field, whatever. Yeah. No, they're like they're supposed to be like horrible, horrible enemies. I don't know. It it didn't seem like something Batman would do to me, so. No. I I wasn't able to enjoy that sequence, but. No. Moving on, the the voice acting, especially from. Uh, Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, who have been playing these two characters for right around 15 years now. Yeah. They're, it's it's incredible that they're still as on point as they are. Because um, that was just my favorite part of the whole thing for me. Yeah. They're they're definitely, they, definitely like, they definitely like offer their own feel to it. You know, they're definitely a different take. You know, it just it's just part of that, you know, it's just that environment that is like that animated Batman from the '90s that we all watched. Yeah. You know, it's just that's the part of that feeling, series. right? Well, there is there is another part where like 
Batman is a person with a, a thug to have him give him information. Oh, and swear to me for he, it. Yeah, he's yeah. like, swear to me. I don't know. Just, there were certain parts like that part where the animation just wasn't like really up to it. Like, the, yeah. I don't know. Swear to me it was way cooler in Batman Begins than it was in this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It, it, felt, it felt really forced. And that, and that honestly has been the problem with a lot of these movies. And I feel like they stick to that, you know, that, that look and that feel just for nostalgic reasons. But, God, that, that's just, like, one of those examples of how American animation just has such a hard time keeping up with decent, you know, Japanese or Asian animation. Yeah, like, all, all <laughs> the Marvel movies and all DC movies that have that, that Asian-inspired theme, like, they're just always better. They just always look yeah. cooler, and they just... The, the more you make it like Dragon Ball Z, like, the action, it's just going to be a better... Just the detail too, man. It's just uh, so much like better. You watch like Shazam and, and Apocalypse go at it, and, and like the Flashpoint <laughs> Paradox or whatever. It's just like a really cool fight. And yeah. then this, it was like, I know it's a simple story and whatnot, but it just, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't really, as a, as a, like I want DC to be the the better people. I just like DC better. But God, their movies are just like this one. It just, it just didn't do it. I don't know. I didn't like it. No. They, they do. They always. They always. Under the record, you know, way it, better. It, it, yeah, it was way better, but they just can't get away from that like cartoony. I mean, even when we have people getting shot in the face and and you know people cursing and saying bullshit, they just you know you have you have one scene the Joker saying God damn it, and then another scene somebody says you know like bullshit asshole or something like that. But then what does Barbara say when she gets an argument with Batman? That's bull. Nobody ever says that's bull. Nobody yeah. ever says that. And, you know, and, and, it's just like it, so that makes it feel like when they do curse in that movie, it's like people cursing in a kids movie, yeah. not the other way around. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, it's just I want I want to get you guys thoughts on this because looking at the animation, like I could tell there's certain spots where like certain animations like just didn't jive well, and it seemed that certain animations uh passed slower than others because they couldn't really quite get the sinking right. I thought it was more like the slow talking scenes. It just looked awkward. Like they were definitely yeah. using like two different animation t styles, like for talking right. scenes and action scenes. But it, like there was even a scene where, like, uh, the mobster was talking to his nephew, and he picked up a drink off the table. It was like a, there was like a slight pause where he put his hand on the drink and then it cut over and you saw him like drinking. It was like they had two separate frames and they couldn't yeah. edit them together properly. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, anyway, you guys want to you guys want to wrap it up and give out the final scores? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Carl, what do you think? I honestly, I would give it an eight point five just because. It was such an accurate representation, and the only reason why I don't go higher is because of that padding in the beginning. But yeah. other than that, it's pretty accurate. I don't know. For I me, think that's pretty generous. <laughs> for me, I, I, probably closer. I think I give it a six just because of Batman in it. If it was like the the Green Lantern or something, I probably would have been like a five. Like honestly, right. it was like super disjointed. It just wasn't. It wasn't fun to follow. Like it was just, it felt awkward and it felt forced. And because I'm not comparing it to the Killing Joke comic book, I'm comparing it to Under the Red Hood, the last DC anime that I liked. Yeah. That one was fantastic. Like I liked every minute of that one. This one, and, I kind of had to get through it. And and to be fair, I think we're all being a little bit, you know, generous here. Well, I haven't given my score yet. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, well, I think you guys are both a little generous on that. I give it like a 5.5. You know, it was, it's easy to just make a frame-by-frame -frame copy of a comic book. You know, that can be good, that can be bad, but it's easy. You know, you just sit there and you read it. You know, they expanded in the wrong parts. They didn't take enough creative liberty with it. You know, and it was, what they did take was just in order to pad it and make it more like, you know, just longer or more, you know, like more more, more relatable. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stick on the bottom end of that. 5.5 for me. Yeah. yeah. Just, just. Something I just thought of, like you were saying, making more relatable and whatnot. I don't like knowing the Joker's backstory. I like, I like it. Like, I know this is an old comic book and it was really decided in that comic book, but I just like it better when he's has an ambiguous past, like in the Dark right. Knight. I think it's just it's, it makes him more of a tragic character, honestly. Absolutely. I agree. 
because that's half the draw of the character. So I I agree. Oh um, yeah, that, you know, like it's like reading those fan theories on you know online about what his, what his origin might be. Is he like a wounded soldier from Iraq? Is yeah. He, is he a domestic abuse victim? Like <laughs> who knows? It could be anything. But that's part of his mystery. Yeah. There's there's so Not many possibilities. But um, to yeah. to to finish the thought, I I think. Uh, we're all being a little bit generous just because of the fact that we're Batman fans. If it were any other character, we'd probably score it lower. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, but that's part of why I didn't like it so much. That's not the Batman that I'm a fan of. You know, that was some kind of weird, forgiving, yeah. let's shake hands, Batman. Not a fan. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let's call it. Anyway, this has been Carlos Armando and Abeto for Most Most Reviews. Follow us on YouTube. Twitch and Twitter. Have a good night. Yep. See you later. See you guys. All it takes is one bad day.